Welcome to the University of Oslo's Department of Informatics, where all the classrooms and all the labs are named after programming languages. The coolest one, though, is Ada, where you'll find the open zone for experimental informatics, which is a privately funded hackerspace open for all students with loads of tools and hardware and Rubik's Cubes and Legos and Arduinos and circuit boards and diodes and robotics and fun stuff that anyone can just come in and play with, which is exactly what I'm here to do. I'm here to assemble an ergo docs. If you don't know what it is, it's an ergonomic keyboard that you build yourself, basically. Uh, it's open source and you can find everything on the internet. I'll include all of the links in the thing downstairs. Right now, Ergodox is not available to purchase per se. You'll have to buy parts and assemble it yourself or have someone assemble it for you. My kit is from massdrop.com and the way massdrop works is that you, they gather all the users interested in, in certain items and then they make an order in bulk, basically, to lower the price for, uh, for, uh, for the customers. Me. And they have instructions on how to assemble it, but I found them to be a bit unclear on certain points. So I looked around on the internet to see if I can find some videos on how to assemble it, and I found one by White Fire Dragon, where he goes through the entire assembly in about half an hour in rapid motion. But his doesn't go into like the minor importances, like which, di which direction should the diode face and what's the polarity of this and that. So there are a few important things that I'll stress in this video, so that if you get stuck, I, I suggest you just watch it all and then uh, hopefully that'll help. The first part of the assembly is actually the most difficult, which is a solder on all these tiny diodes for every key. Now, most important of all, and I say this because I learned the hard way, is that the diodes have to be the right way. I mean, I could hardly see any details at all, but if you look closely, there's a red line across the top of the diode. That side goes towards the square on the circuit board. You got one side is a square and the other is a circle, so the, the side with the line goes on the side with the square. I really messed up on this minor detail until I, I soldered most of the diodes onto the circuit board, and then I found out that, oh, they're, they're the wrong way. So I had to re-solder them and flip them around and get them on the right way. And I suggest you do it right the first time so you don't have to do it twice. Annoyingly, when I was nearly done, I was missing two diodes and I couldn't find them anywhere and I was really pissed at Master Up for not including any spares. So I crawled all over this floor, which is covered in black little spots looking for a black little spot and every time I found like a bit of wire stripping I was ecstatic only to you know have it be wire strippings. Eventually I discovered soldering points on the circuit board that were not assigned to any keys and they, they were not supposed to be any diodes there so that's where I had soldered my four, four spare diodes so thank you Masterop for including spares I'm an idiot. After relocating them, there are resistors and capacitors and the I.O. expander, which for me needed a bit of a squeeze to make fit. But all of these were really simple to solder onto the circuit board. USB and connectors on both sides for the keyboard to communicate. And the thing that makes it all work, a TNC microcontroller. I know nothing about how or why any of these things work or do what they do. After soldering all the magic stuff, it's time to fit the keys. I went for MX clears, which are a bit stiff, but they have this nice little bump where the key press is registered so you don't feel like you need to mash the keys when you type, which is supposedly better, uh, better for your fingers. Before attaching the keys, you need to sandwich the middle layer of the acrylic case between the circuit board and the keys. Make sure you fit the corners and the middle first, and then solder all those bits on so you line up all the keys correctly and you get a solid base to work on. Three LEDs go on these three keys on your right hand side. More importantly, the LEDs have specific polarity. The long leg is positive and goes into the square pad on the circuit board. Now I don't know what happens if you get this part wrong, but I suggest you try not to. Stop. 
stop. Before you go any further, it's time to do the most exciting part about this entire project. It's time to do some testing. You'll need the TNC firmware loader, and you'll need the actual firmware. Both of these can be found on Mastrop's webpage, but I'll, I'll include some links in the, in the thing. After doing all of that, you should open a text editor and just start testing individual keys. Does this one work? Does that one work? Does this one work? Mine came up. Three of the keys on the left one were not working and two on the right was not working. So I went back and then I, I soldered the diodes that were loose and at one point there was a key that I had forgotten to solder onto one of, the, one of the pads. But once you're positive that all your keys are working, you could just tear that protection off the case and just slap that thing together. I went for the DCS profiled keys because I, I felt like they were probably better for my my fingers and my hands than the, the, the perfectly flat retro, what they call DAC, DCA. This requires a bit more effort on the on the puzzle bit of, of the assembly where you have to sort out the different angles and slopes of the keys because they, they have a specific profile. So this is my end result, which I use daily. It's terrible at first, so it takes a lot of practice and just getting used to. Uh, I, I, for instance, I, I keep missing C and V and X because they're all lined up weird. If I had access to MX Clears before I made the order, I probably would have ended up with MX Browns instead because I feel like the MX Clears were a bit too stiff. But apart from that, this was so much fun and I, I'm still looking for like, what's the next thing I can build because this was well worth both time and money. Feel free to ask in the comments below if anything is unclear about Masterop, about Ergodox, about soldering. I mean, I'm not going to be able to answer everything because I'm by no means an expert, but I'll, I'll try to help. If you're building your own Ergodox, feel free to leave your specs and, and customizations in the comments. I'm always curious to see what people do. Um, my Ergodox will probably go through some customization. I'm thinking of buying other key camps at least. I was thinking about a different case too, but that's going to be a bit more tricky because of the, the sandwiched layer in between. Um, lastly, uh, I wish you luck and that you have fun.